Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today uh, I figured I would uh, share my method for applying Thermal Paste to RX Vega and potentially all the other cards I'm ever going to put for uh, put under Liquid Nitrogen. So, you know, there's not really mu that much to it. Let's let's get on with it. So, here's the uh, here's the RX uh, Vega 64 card. So as you can see, I've already taken off the heat sink and all of that, because quite frankly, there's only that many screws you can pull out of it before it comes off on its own, uh, you know. So I don't see a purpose in uh, making a guide for that. And then here we have the LN2 pot. This is the Raptor 4. Um, it actually clears, the, the chokes on the card actually clear LN2 pots, which is rather surprising. Um, so you don't need to use an extension base, which is really awesome because the, the extensions royally screw up the thermal characteristics of any LN2 pots. So, yeah, we're, we gotta get this onto that, and uh, there's, there's a few tricks for, well, tricks. Basically, I have a method of doing the thermal paste so that it doesn't crack on me, as I have managed to get Vega to run all the way down to minus 130, uh, and then, well, at, at around minus 130, the... Uh, well, below that, the display actually, the display drive circuit gives up on you. So that that's kind of unfortunate. Um, I'll try fix that sometime in the future, but uh, I, I can't do it on this card. Maybe my Vega 56 will get some extra display drive voltage, as I have gotten the data sheets for the voltage controllers for that. So anyway, with that out of the way, how, how, how do you do thermal paste so that it doesn't crack at minus 130? Well, very... very very simply, um, the first thing we're, we're going to do here, uh, well, first things first, you do need Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, or, uh, well, actually, I don't know how you would apply uh, the Kingpin Cooling Blue Paste, the, the KPX Paste. I have no idea how you're, you're supposed to apply that one. Because um, basically, the what I've heard is the KPX is a little bit more, uh, well, a little bit less uh, liquidy. Is, is, well, I know it's like viscosity, but I don't know in which way the freaking, uh, which, like, is it more viscous or less viscous? Either way, it's less fluid, um, and I don't know how you would apply that, but I do know that with Cryonaut, I have a method, and that method seems to work great, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of Cryonaut on the Vega core, so that I get an outline when I uh, quickly just, yeah. So we're just going to dab a little bit on the corners. That's not actually how much thermal paste we're going to use. We're going to use a lot more than that. Hopefully the tube doesn't run out. So I just do that. Get the LN2 pot. Set up the mounting hardware. And uh, let's see. That one. That one. And that came together a lot easier. And then just press down on it a bit to get the imprint of the core. There. So that gives me a good idea of where I need to get the thermal paste on the LN2 pot. Um, I mean, you know, if you don't want to bother with that step, you could just cover the entire base, but that, that's like unnecessarily using a lot more thermal paste. So I'm just going to do a line from one corner to the other, and you'll want a relatively thick line because you're going to be spreading out the thermal paste further than the actual GPU core itself is. Um, so now I'm just going to spread that out. And you want, you definitely want to go past where the GPU core ends. Cause the idea behind, uh, the, this part is basically, um, well, basically if you just did this part, you would be doing the method that I had recommended to me by Dan Kopp. Um, except, uh, well, I've never actually tested if this alone works, but I do know that if you add a few more steps to this, you can make it, like, definitely work. Because that, that's what I do, so... Yeah, but th this part alone, in many cases, should be sufficient. I tend... I kind of go overboard with uh, what I do as extra, so... And now I'm just going to get it a bit more even because I don't l like having it looking all patchy like it is, so. Yeah. There we go. And I just screwed up the middle there. So 
that's where we're going to put on the LN2 pot. I'm not going to do any more with that. Actually, I kind of want to extend this edge. There. Didn't look quite far enough. There. Now I'll leave that alone. Um, and not do anything more with that part of it. We're going to get the GPU core. And this is where a lot of people will <laughs> just be like, oh my god, what are you doing? So here is how you deal what, what I do. First, you go all around the edges and you just put thermal paste on the edges. And you put a good amount. And by good amount, I mean quite a lot. Like, way more than most people would put on, like, if you were doing air cooling or water cooling, the amount of thermal paste I put around the edges uh, of the GPU core is more than most people put in their entire system. So, <laughs> you know, um, you, you end up using a lot of cryonaut. But that's exactly why they sell it in 37 gram tubes. Um... In some, in some stores. I'm not sure what stores all stock it, but, uh, yeah. Because the 37 grams tubes are, they do have a bit of a exclusivity situation on them. And I haven't checked if Alza stocks it. I know they stock the smaller tubes, but. And I think this one's running out. That is not good. Go. So, yeah, you want to cover up all the edges like that, which that just looks like way too much thermal paste, but trust me, it helps. It definitely helps. Um, and actually, I think one of the corners, well, actually, two of the corners, that corner over there, and actually, I just the generally the whole top edge I kind of screwed up, because I really want the thermal paste going over the edge of the die, like all the way down to the substrate, so go. And there we go, and then this one needs a bit of a tweak. And, yeah. So, and... Why is it that when I did this before, this was working so much better? There. Now there's plenty of thermal paste. <laughs> so, yeah. Absolutely every single side, every single edge, completely uh, covered. There. So, that's that's one part. And then the last thing I do is I just put an X across the m middle of the die. Just to basically... Because um, basically, if you have that extra thermal paste in the center, uh, when you put it together, it's going to push the air out from the center. Um, and make sure that you don't get anything stuck around the actual edges. In theory, at least. I don't think air... Like, really in theory, with how much mounting pressure... LN2 pots have. Um, it really shouldn't have any air bubbles regardless of what, if you do this or not, but I just like to do this for paranoia's sake. Um, and it does just give you more thermal paste. So we now have the X, and now we just slap these things together, and that's pretty much it as far as the thermal paste application portion goes. Where's that screw hole? I mean, where's that screw? There. Okay. This one shifted a bit. <sighs> Damn it, stay out. The only problem with, like, these adjustable mounting systems is that they don't stay in place, so when you put, try to put the card on, they keep shifting around. And then I can't find the screws again. Where are these? There we go, nailed it. And now I actually keep put applying pressure on the back of the core throughout the entire installation process. Um, so, I'm just putting some 3M nuts on the mounting, uh, holes, because there's a, like, my Raptor 4 is off by a few fractions of a millimeter, uh, in terms of where the mounting hardware ends and where the actual screw holes are on the, are on the RX Vega. 
So if I just use the thumb screws on their own, what ends up happening is that they come down at a bit of an angle and they dig into the PCB, which, uh, which is not great. So, yeah. And I do have, wa like, and the washers I have are all too big, so... Well, they're either too small or too big. So, basically, yeah, I'm just using 3M nuts as washers here. Go. Now, when it comes to tightening down the actual mounting hardware, um, you're going to want to tighten it down just before the point of flexing the PCB. That does not actually require that much force to do. Um... So I'm just going to quickly check that we're level right now, which we are, because you can actually sort of, this is why I don't have, like, you'll see a lot of photos of people with uh, GPU LN2 pots that are, like, covered up in uh, insulation material all the time, but I don't do that because it basically lets me peek under the, uh, well, basically peek down the edge of the PCB to check if the core and the LN2 pot are level, which pretty much are, and you can also see, as I was saying, the mounting hardware is at a little bit of an angle, which uh, kind of sucks, because it does, like, it tends to bend the, it does look like it tends to bend the PCB more than it might have to, but this one's a bit loose. There. And now I'll just tighten them all down at the same time. Let's just check, because it really doesn't take a lot to flex the card. Because, yeah, it's already starting to, as you can see. So, at this point, you can pretty much stop. Because, uh, if I keep going, you know, you can actually bend it so badly that, uh, you could damage the... Well, you could cause physical damage to the PCB. So, yeah. This is pretty much the exact uh, setup in terms of like heat sink mounting um, that I ran for uh, for the last few, like I posted a bunch of RX Vega LN2 scores recently. This is how I pretty much prepped the card. I mean, we're skipping the part where I, you know, drown it in blue shop towels and, uh, and actual regular towels as well. But basically if you're, you know, doing that, then you would just wrap everything in blue shop towel. Um, and really, I would recommend, like, you should also use, like, Vaseline or Plasti Dip to make sure that the actual PCB is waterproof to start with. <laughs> so the, the shop towel is to absorb water, but you'd want to have the PCB in a condition where if there is water on it, that it doesn't actually, like, short anything out. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to do that with this card because this is the uh, card that I was given to me, well, not given... On, it's on loan from Alza, which thanks to them for actually giving me the card to mess with. It's been uh, it's been fun. <laughs> I have you know I have run it on liquid nitrogen a lot. I think actually this is probably the GPU I've run on liquid nitrogen the most. So and semi successfully, which is the most surprising thing, because if you look at my history of running AMD cards on liquid nitrogen, it's just like a whole bunch of disasters. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, very thankful for the, the card uh, being uh, on loan to me. Uh, and you should definitely go check out, you know, alza.co.uk for getting uh, liquid nitrogen hardware. Because they do sell LN2 pots and Cryonaut and the Kingpin Blue Paste and, you know, uh, all of the, well, almost, basically, like, basically everything I use here you can actually get from Alza. Card, LN2 pot, not the same pot. They don't sell uh, Der Bauer pots, but you can get a K Kingpin one and you can get thermal paste. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching. I can't redo this because this uses up a ton of thermal paste and I think I'm not actually going to tear the card apart any, uh, again. So th this might end up getting run on dry ice or liquid nitrogen sometime soon again. Um, that's it for the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.